哎呀呀！哎呀我！哎呀！哎呀！哎呀！哎呀！Welcome to an all new episode of Get Real. On this week's episode, we'll be talking about a movie that we just watched recently on the Smokin' Hot Toddcast Live. You may have even been there for the journey. This is the first B movie that we have ever reviewed on Get Real, but it's an appropriate film because it's a pretty damn good B movie. I've talked about in the past how we're going to talk about all kinds of different movies. It doesn't really matter if they're, you know, blockbuster hits, indie flicks, or if they're just, you know, some silly movie that I find entertaining. We're going to talk about it on Get Real, and that's exactly what we're doing on this week's episode. This film was made by legendary B-movie director Lynn Kabazinski and stars him as well. This film is called Challenge of the Five Gauntlets. And what's beautiful about this film is that Lynn Kabazinski, though he makes schlocky B-movies, he has yet to put out a movie that sucks. I'm just going to say it right there. Now, it depends on your definition of what sucks means. Uh, if you're into the big blockbuster type films, well, then you're probably not going to enjoy this. But if you're down, if you're into more like, uh, you know, indie flick type things, you know, indie, indie, t what's the word? How am I going to phrase this? If you're into or down with, in, yeah, you like what I did there? Independent film uh, that, you know, has some schlockiness to it that's more about having fun than it is actually, you know, telling a, a full cohesive story this is the film for you and Lim Kabazinski is notorious for doing films like this uh, he's done some great films in the past like Z Swamp Zombies <laughs> Fist of the Vampire And one of my all-time favorites, and it's the favorite of most Lynn Kabazinski fans, Curse of the Wolf. So he's very, he's very familiarized, if you will, with movies like this. However, this movie takes more of a dramatic turn. I really like this film. I'm just going to get out there and say it. Full disclosure, it's really really awesome it, it's kind of a, a look at look back at some of the old kung fu movies of like the 70s and 80s and in case you haven't realized that this movie is a kung fu film and that's what Lynn Kabazinski is most mostly known for is for his martial arts and uh, his way of handling kung fu in sort of a new society that doesn't really care that much about kung fu or at least you know well, it, it's what it is. They don't really care about uh, kung fu these days. I think the only film that really comes close is Kill Bill. And and, and that's that was almost, well, it's over now, 15 years ago. We're closing in on 16 years. 17! Shit! It's 17 years since the first Kill Bill. 16 since the second. So, I mean, that gives you any idea of, you know, how kung fu's kind of taken a back seat in terms of film. That's a great example right there. And... You know, Lynn Kabazinski just makes sure that you don't forget that. In addition to him starring in this film, this film also co-stars Leo Fong. Now, if you're a fan of Red Letter Media, like I am, you're probably very familiar with Leo Fong. Leo Fong uh, used to do a lot of martial arts, kung fu, action films in the 70s and 80s. He kind of had his own, he kind of did his own artistic thing too with kung fu. He was sort of like an early uh, Jackie Chan in that he used to do film, action films, and incorporate kung fu into them. Uh, and the one that everybody knows him best for is Low Blow. And that movie, if you've never seen it, I own it on DVD. We might even do a get real on it in the near future. I don't know. But if you've never seen uh, Low Blow, you need to check it out, as well as its sequel, Blood Street. Check it out, you won't be, you will not be sorry. 
it. But Leo Fong is also an infamous kung fu artist. The man is in his early 90s and still kicking ass, as you will see in this movie. The man still gets it. And he's absolutely incredible. Now, he looks like he's about 400 million years old. That's what happens when you age and live to the uh, age of 90 or 91, however old he is now. Um, and he looks the part. But, I mean, he, he doesn't miss a beat. The man is still out there. The man is still doing his thing, you know. And that's that's the beauty of Leo Fong. So, really, this is an, an exciting film for that reason alone. That you've got Lynn Kavazinski and Leo Fong together. Lynn Kavazinski, who kind of embodies the the modern day version of Kung Fu with the classic style of Leo Fong. They've come together to team up for this film and it is incredible. It doesn't really disappoint. Now, that being said, this is not a blockbuster hit, okay? This was not meant for the theaters. Uh, it did not get released on Video On Demand or Amazon or Netflix because of COVID or anything like that. No, this film went straight to Blu-ray DVD and there's a reason for that. Lynn Kavazinski's movies, as I said, are B-movies, so they're not, you know, theater-worthy. And when you watch the film, as well as some of his other films, you will you'll, you'll quickly figure out why. Maybe I could use your help. But we need to talk about the film itself. Of course, the film is called Challenge of the Five Gauntlets. Uh, it's really in the old style of classic kung fu. This guy has to... So it's sort of like a mixture of classic kung fu movies and Indiana Jones. Uh, Lynn Kavazinski's character has to go off on a mission, on, on an exciting adventure, to find Buddha's tooth. Buddha's tooth has healing powers, and the hope is, is that he can find it and give it to this family who has a girl that is a little baby girl who is dying of an undisclosed disease. It's never really told to the audience what she's dying from, which is part of the problem with Lynn Kavisinski movies is that they don't they don't always plot out everything correctly, but the movie's still entertaining, so who cares? But anyway, uh, yeah, he's on this quest to find Buddha's tooth. Uh, and in the style of classic Kung Fu, he has to go through five gauntlets, which means he has to go through five evildoers in order to get his hands on Buddha's tooth. And I've never actually seen a Kung Fu movie where that happens, and I feel bad uh, because I'm sure it probably, if, if there is one out there, I'm sure it's awesome. The only thing that this movie reminded me of, and I, this is not an insult on Lynn's behalf whatsoever, this reminded me of an episode of SpongeBob SquarePants, where SpongeBob, I don't even remember the point of the episode. You mean this whole thing was a scam to get us to buy real estate? Yes. But he has to go on some sort of little quest, and he has to face off against these different evildoers in, the, in that episode. Yeah! Dance, Squirrel, dance! Ha! Look! Huh? <laughs> Feel the sting of my horrible body odor! So that's what this reminded me of. Not, it's not knocking Lynn or the movie itself. That's just what I instantly thought of when I saw this film. It's like, oh yeah, it's that SpongeBob episode where he had to go do things. So it's it's crazy funny like that. But it, it's still a really good film in terms of how they set it up. He's got to face off against these these people to get the to get the uh, tooth. But really. When he faces off again, you know, no spoilers here, but when he faces off against these people, there's only one that makes sense. There's there's not many that make sense. It, it's like he's just fighting random people to get a th to get a thing. That's essentially what it ends up being. But there's there's one that actually makes sense, and then the rest are just kind of like whatever the hell they could come up with uh, for him to, to fight against. But weirdly enough, it works. There's also a fake-out ending in this movie, which kind of bothers me because it's like you're about halfway through the film and he gets his, and he's challenged. Again, I'm not, I'm not gonna, spoilers, I, I don't. I don't know if I should do spoilers. Ah, what the hell? Spoiler alert! <laughs> In the film, he faces off against the first three gauntlets and then ends up getting what he thinks is Buddha's tooth. He gets it, gives it to the family, and when they try to heal her, she's, they say, oh, it melted. 
It melted in her hands. It disappeared. It wasn't. It wasn't the real gauntlet. It wasn't. Or excuse me. It wasn't the real tooth. So he's like, oh, oh. Uh, you have to excuse me. I've had a migraine all weekend, and so I was kind of nauseous throughout the last couple of days. So it's it's all dissipated, but it's all coming out in negative air. Bitch, are you for real? But anyway, so it wasn't the real two. So he had to go back out and face off against two more gauntlets, which is weird because, I mean, it's five gauntlets. He knew going into this it was five gauntlets. So why did he think he won the tooth after just three gauntlets? This is where you can't read too much into Lynn Kabazinski's movies because you'll be finding plot holes all day. But anyway... So he has to go off and find that. So you have the fake out ending, which I think was really dumb. Because I actually fell for it. I'm like, could could this be a film where it's called Challenge of the Five Gauntlets and the man doesn't actually fight five gauntlets? He just fights the three gauntlets? Uh, that that was my question. And it got answered, no, he's going to fight the, the five gauntlets, but it's going to be convoluted and weird. But that's also the charm of Lynn Kavazinski, so I can't be mad about it. I can't be mad at him. He did his thing. That's the way he does. He does his thing. As I stated before, uh, this is very much like Indiana Jones, uh, Meek's classic kung fu. And you see that throughout the film. There's, there's, there's a lot of imagery that is very comparable to the Temple of Doom. Uh, there's one scene in particular, and I won't go into too much detail, but there's one scene in particular where it's just, it's blatantly ripped off from the Temple of Doom. But as I said in an earlier episode, uh, influence comes from influence comes from influence. You know, uh, there's, you know, ideas come from ideas from ideas, you know, and then of course the, the, the classic phrase, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. I think that's what it says. Excuse me. That's how you drink water in America. But yeah, so there's some lifting from different films, but it really doesn't like bog the film down at all. It has its own interesting little message behind it, and I, I find that really refreshing. Especially taking ideas from movies that, you know, that are classics, but you don't talk about very much anymore. So it's nice to see, you know, Indiana Jones pop up in something all of a sudden. So I like that. The Kung Fu, however, the fighting in the film, not the best. Uh, Lynn Kavazinski, like I said, he is a martial arts expert. Uh, and in every film that he has Kung Fu in, which is pretty much every film that he does, Uh, it, in, it involves a lot of kung fu in it, so naturally you would think, okay, well, either he or someone who's really knowledgeable about kung fu, hell, how about Leo Fong, who you've invited to be in this film, uh, how about they do it? Well, how about, or how about he choreographs it, or somebody who could choreograph... Nobody was in complete coordination of that, so it, it looks kinda lame. <laughs> It doesn't look great. The, there is some really good fight scenes in this movie, but for every really good fight scene, there is a really bad one that kind of over, kind of overhauls it a little bit, and you think, oh, okay, well, that wasn't, that wasn't as great as I thought it was going to be. So it, it kind of comes and goes. So the choreography isn't great, uh, but there, but there is fighting, punching, people get stabbed. It's a fucking great action movie. Pretty nice locations too. Uh, you know, they went to some areas that had snow. They were trying to go for you know like a like a moody effect type thing, and and that worked pretty well. Uh, some interesting interesting places. You know, and that Leo Fong is in sort of like the the typical because Leo Fong is supposed to be like the teacher to Leo or to Lynn Kavazinski's uh, student, and so uh, naturally Leo Fong is in this like. Buddhist-esque looking temple uh, where he is the master and he kind of, you know, just, just he's just there and he's always meditating. So there are some interesting locations. However, there, 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 are, there are not enough. There's a whole lot of something that, there's a whole lot of something that people tend to not like, even in B-movies, and it's wandering around in the woods. Wandering around in trees and, and, and just, you know, foliage 
Uh, they do go to a snowy, like I said, the snowy location, so that added some mood to it, but it's still just kind of in the woods, in the forest, and so that tends to get a little old after a while. But, again, with Lynn Kabazinski, there is enough action, there's enough stuff going on that you're not really bogged down with the location issues. You're letting that slide for just good old-fashioned schlock. And that's the Lynn Kabazinski way. Overall, though, the movie is fantastic. Uh, yeah, I, know, I know it sounded like I was dogging it a little bit, but I would highly recommend this movie. Uh, it's available on DVD and Blu-ray. Uh, it's called Challenge of the Five Gauntlets, uh, and it's it's a great film. And, you know, I, I applaud Lynn Kabazinski for everything that he does, because even though he is kind of a schlocky B-movie uh, maker and actor, he knows how to make an entertainingly bad movie. And that's what Challenge of the Five Gauntlets is. It's one of those movies that is entertainingly bad. And so therefore, it, it, it's not it's not a bad movie. It's just, it's not going to be up to everybody's par. So if you're going to watch this, please understand, go into it knowing that this is an indie flick. This is a B movie. This is not something that you would see in the theaters per se. But it is still pretty entertaining. And that's the beauty, and that's the charm of Lynn Kabazinski. It's really the charm of Leo Fong, too. Uh, so I would highly recommend not just Challenge of the Five Gauntlets, but also Low Blow. Go watch Low Blow. Leo Fong is incredible. Let's face facts. If you're not familiar with Leo Fong, go, go watch Leo Fong. You will not be sorry. But yeah. But Challenge of the Five Gauntlets, overall a great film. Minor issues that could be easily tweaked and made better. And they could be easily ignored to enjoy a good, old-fashioned, schlocky, kung-fu, exciting film. So there you have it. That's Lynn Kebazinski's Challenge of the Five Gauntlets. You know what's really weird, though? We did this on the Smokin' Hot Toddcast Live. It was me, Miss Pingrino, Miranda, and Daniel. There was one person that wasn't there that I was really surprised didn't show up. And I thought he might show up for this, too, to make a special guest appearance, but he didn't show up for this either. And I'm just, I'm, he's, he's, it's one of the Toddcast team members. I'm just really surprised that he didn't make an appearance in this at all. I'm just like, what?